harder as it lays out for eons in the desert. And if we could pick this one up down here, the smaller one, this was also in a tomb. And you can see it's badly weathered. It's, it's probably, again, dates to somewhere between 300 and 500 A.D. And uh, found, I think, in 1959 in Kawachi, uh, in the ghost city of the Noskins, there's their ruins. Who knows what else is buried over there with those pyramids? But you can see, again, the hadrosaur dinosaur. No question. And the tail coming like no this. No question. And you have more to show us. Yes. Here is the Noskin mantelpiece. Um, again, anybody who's worked with the textiles of that area, you will see the whole length of this, this, the sequence of the dinosaurs, which is uh, llama and alpaca, but uh, very, it, it has, uh, this is woven, some of, their, some of the finest textiles in the world, uh, the, the most intricately woven was 696 uh, threads per linear inch. This is not that tight of thread. But you can see the dinosaurs here in There's this. There's no question about it. And, uh, and uh, this wrapped a mummy. That's right. And so here's yeah, another one of the same animal that we see on the vases of a dinosaur with dermal spines. And we can stretch it out here for the uh, viewing audience. Here's somebody had seen living dinosaurs, and this no was put with them. No question about it, in order to faithfully portray them. That's right. And this is a Paracas fabric. The Paracas people, they did their, this is, this is the original fabric right here. You can see it's badly deteriorated. And they did vegetable oils, uh, so this is painted on theirs. But again, the same creature you see on the Noskin burial cloth, the same dinosaur. Oh, yes. Common. And beautifully, common. again, no expert is going to dismiss this or say it's not authentic. The people who are the authorities know this is real. And the common experience. Okay. And we have also the small um, Paracas fabric. Here again is the dinosaur, the small dinosaur. Incredible. No Wolver question they no had question. to see living dinosaurs no in order to portray them. Yes. More artifacts. This is Paracas. And we can see the dinosaur again, similar. And it's done with vegetable oils, not with minerals and baked and, and fire kiln yes. uh, like the Noskins and Tiwanaku people. And they had little pointy hats, small hats the people did. Uh, and there's more. Oh, much more. And here is the small piece of fabric. And you can see the dinosaurs on it. See the dinosaur? Yes. And this, oh, yes. is, uh, this survived from about 400 to 700 A.D. It's about 1,300 years old. We can see the dinosaur that we showed the picture of. Again. This was owned by somebody, like somebody today, putting a teddy bear on their T-shirt or, or putting a bird or whatever. Here's a few examples of dinosaurs. This is the Noskin vase with the two dinosaurs on it. Isn't that marvelous? It, this is consistent. So to them, this was legendary. And a rather common sight yes. within the memory and experience of man. Yes, we have about five different people groups within this geographical region, and all of them depict the same animal the same way. Now, I am so intrigued with this vase. This is uh, probably the most prized object that should serve as a death blow to evolution. We have two dinosaurs. I think they're male and female. But you see the dermal spines, you see the stripes, you see three toes and four toes. And this is Tiwanaku. Tiwanaku, around 500 A.D., uh, this was found uh, up above uh, between Nazca and Arequipa some time ago. But you can see the dinosaur. And they made it three-dimensional. And again, pre-Columbian experts like Helene Silverman, uh, Dr. Giuseppe Orfica, the famous Italian archaeologist, uh, Helene Silverman, uh, Donald Prose, as I mentioned. These people, when they see this, they know it's real. Yes. In fact, a few of them have said, I know these things are real, but it would end my career if I go ahead and sign this paper. Let's just keep it between you and me. Yes, they saw some kind of creatures that had to be dinosaurs. We know that these are pre-Columbian artifacts. We just don't know how to explain it, but we don't want to put our careers on the line. We'll say it privately, but not publicly. Well, so, they're here to tell yes, the truth, career or that's not. Right, that's right. 
and uh, these are beautifully well done and well preserved. Again, God has left these things. He always leaves evidence for people. Let's leave that for the audience to see. This is one of the most amazing artifacts I've ever seen in all my life and career and research. It's, it's definitely one of a kind. And, uh, and uh, that's a family heirloom. And, and uh, you know, God's so gracious. When we pray and ask Him for things yes. and seek Him first in His kingdom and His righteousness, He has a plan and a purpose for everybody. And I believe a long time ago when my father took me out in the desert to Chaco Canyon, and uh, the Anastasi ruins, and I came across an obscure piece of information about dinosaur petroglyphs that they could not explain that were anomalous more than 30 years ago. That that little thing in my life was a Malchus's ear that led me to the belief in the, uh, uh, the authority of the Bible and that dinosaurs and man lived together. And then he opened doors for me to travel around the world and then for me to be associated with you and your friendship to bring me into your life and so we can air these things on this program. And that's well, God's doing in all His glory. And you have been willing to be used of God and to take all the criticism, whatever it might be, to declare the truth. That's right. Now, that truth leads us to the following statement. We've seen incredible, profound evidence that not only destroys evolutionary theory in that the dinosaurs died out 64 million years ago and man about two and a half to three million years ago recognized his uniqueness according to that evolutionary theory and all of that dispels the notion and the concept of a superintending God in the universe. Well, it's not just a notion. What Dennis Swift has brought to the program today verifies the Bible. First of all, that all creatures, all kinds, were created during the six days of creation. Secondly, eyewitness accounts in the days of Job, just a few thousand years ago, in Job chapter 40, place man and behemoth, the dinosaur, as being contemporary. Then, Jesus Christ verified all of the scripture in the last chapter of the Bible, and he said, don't add one word, don't take one word from it. And the deity of Christ, the compassion of Christ, are all at stake in this issue. You see, Jesus Christ really came. He walked our streets. He confirmed the Old Testament. He corrected those who would criticize the Word of God. He loved us, went to Calvary, died for our sins, was buried, rose again, and now ascended to heaven. In spirit, he approaches every man. Christ is the light that lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Would you let him right now approach you? Would you respond to him? Just pray this simple prayer. Just pray it with me. Dear God, I've been wrong. I'm a sinner. I need you. Thank you for sending Jesus. Lord Jesus, right now, I open my heart to you. Step in and save me, and I will serve you with all my heart. Creation in the 21st Century has been sponsored by Trinity Broadcasting Network. And only with your love gift of support can this program stay on the air. So write to Creation in the 21st Century, P.O. Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711. Creation in the 21st Century is a unique program on TBN combining biblical knowledge with scientific verification. Much of the information that I use on the program is available. Contact us. Just write Creation Evidence Museum, P.O. Box 309, Glen Rose, Texas, 76043, or call us at 254-897-3200. We look forward to hearing from you today.